welcome i'm debbie from so so easy and today i'm going to have a go at making a rag quilt out of flannel so these are all my flannels that i've bought online um, some of them match better than others so i'm going to see what i like when i cut everything and put it all out this is my little sample piece that i made and um, when everything's together we're going to have this kind of fluffy ruffled raggy edge to it which makes a rag quilt look so attractive so um, I'm really looking forward to making one so you need to get some flannel by all means you can do it just in solid colors if you like um, or just in prints or mix and match or both you could even do the whole thing in a single color if you wanted to that would still look cool too so get yourself some flannel you'll also need a, a rotary cutter and uh, some kind of ruler you can either use one of these type of square rulers or a, a long ruler. I've got a 6 by 24 quilting ruler which is going to be good for this but square ones are good too. And then these are ragging shears. Basically what they are is um, a spring loaded scissor and normally when you do scissors your hands naturally cut twice. You know they're making the scissor go in and out but with the rag cutter it springs back out automatically so where we've got lots of cutting to do later on this is going to really help to uh, eliminate some of the tiredness in your hands but again it's not essential you can just use your regular scissors. So we're going to start off by cutting some squares of flannel. I've cut one big pile in this nice lilac color already and now I'm going to cut some more. So a little tip, I'm going to start with this one next and um, when you buy the flannel sometimes you know if it comes like this it's got creases in and especially it has quite a pronounced crease along the fold where it's come off the bolt. So just give your flannel a light press in to start with to get rid of the worst of those creases because it's going to make it easier for us to cut and sew if it's a little bit flatter. So um, get all, all your materials together, give it a light press and then we'll start with our cutting. So I've got my first piece of flannel ready. I've doubled it up so that we have two layers together. It's going to make it a bit quicker to cut and I've trimmed off this edge with my ruler to make sure it's nice and square. And I'm going to cut six inch squares simply because I've got a six inch ruler so this is going to make it nice and easy. But you can make your squares any size. I wouldn't go too much smaller than six inches because then you'll have a lot of sewing to do and you could maybe go up to something like ten but whichever suits you best. So I can square up my ruler with this edge make my first cut cut again and again and I can complete my cuts all the way across the fabric like that until I've used the whole piece then I will take each individual strip and just trim off those salvage edges because we don't want those and now I'm going to cut six inch squares the other way and when I come down to the piece on the fold it may or may not, no oh, this one doesn't work, this one isn't quite big enough the, the lilac colour that I cut before, that did have enough that the, the piece cut on the fold was six inches. So it depends on the width of your fabric. But that one can be a little spare. That one can be for me to test my stitches with later on. So now I need to complete cutting of this piece. And I'll complete the cutting of all of my pieces into the six inch squares. And then we'll have a little bundle of each and we'll start with our layout. So my squares are all now cut out and actually it didn't take me very long at all with that ruler and rotary cutter it's really quick. So I've just put my fabrics out on the table and auditioned them if you like to see which ones I think go well together. I think these top six are okay together. These two here are good with each other but don't necessarily fit these other ones. So I'm going to make these the primary ones for the back along with some pink which matches the stripes, so I've got a darker pink here and a lighter pink here that match the stripes in this one. So these will be my back and then I'm going to have a mixture of all of these six on the front. So let's start making our stacks. 
So I've got all of my fabric squares laid out and I'm going to start making the stacks to sew together. These ones here are for the bottom or the back of the quilt, these ones for the top. So when we think about what the quilt will look like, it will have pattern and, and prints and colour on one side and then when we turn it over we don't want to see like the reverse or the wrong side of the fabric so we want the back to also look nice although it won't have the raggy effect so let's say I'm going to start with this this will be one of the back squares from my quilt that needs to go face down uh, each square is going to have three layers so it will have the what you see on the wrong side plus a piece in the middle which will show up when we do the ragging effect and then a piece on the top. So if we turned it over you've now got a right side plus a piece in the middle for the ragging colour plus a piece on the top. So that's my first square. So now let's do maybe this one will go on the wrong side. Um, this one will go in the centre and this one will go on the top and so I'm just going to keep going like that I've got uh, a wrong side a centre and a top and I'm just lining them all up actually the flannel sticks together so well that you really don't need pins even though there's a layer you can just stick them together and the flannel pieces stay together quite well so I'm now going to go through and start making up some stacks of all of these pieces uh, three in each stack and then we'll start sewing so I've put a lot of stacks together I've got all these different ones so that I've got different fabrics to go on the top each time and when I turn them over there are the three fabrics I wanted to go on the bottom and the light pink just here. So now I've got all of my blocks set up. What I've tried to do as far as possible is if I have set um, a, a patterned fabric on the top, I've set then a plain fabric on the inside and another patterned fabric on the bottom. I'm thinking that uh, when it comes to putting the quilt together later on and putting all the blocks together it will be easier if I use um, for example this block is a very simple one it's got the pink on the top then a print in the middle and a pink on the bottom so I've got a plain or a print on each one and it's the same on each side so this one has a print in the middle and a plain on each side so I'm thinking when I put the blocks together that's going to be easier so now it's time for us to sew so I'm just going to set these aside take the big pile of them over to my sewing machine and we just need to sew in a, in, a, in a cross. So these are my three pieces. As I get to them I'm just going to make sure that they're lined up nicely and then I'm going to use my walking foot because that's going to help a little bit with layers but it's not essential. If you've only got a regular foot on your machine that will do fine too. And we need to sew from one corner to the other and then from this corner to here so that we create a cross. So I've got my work cut out, I'll be doing that and I'll get back to you. So my blocks are all now sewn, I've got my big pile and my blocks have all got the crosses through and it's time for me to lay everything out. So the accountant in me doesn't allow things to be too random so I've set my six squares out along the top um, and then I just shifted everything one square over to make the second layer, shifted everything one square again to make the next. So I will end up with these diagonal patterns running through mine and I quite like that so I'm happy with that. If you want to you can of course be entirely scrappy and random because it's supposed to be a rag quilt made up of all different types of fabrics and um, all different designs of fabrics. So if you want to just be more random go ahead, let's do it. So for mine, I now need to sew my rows together. So I'm going to pick up these two here, for example, and we need to think about right sides and wrong sides. Normally when you're sewing, you'd sew things 
right sides together and sew here and your seam allowances would be hidden. But the whole point of our rag quill is that we want our seam allowances to show. That's going to be our ragging. So instead of putting them right sides together, we need to put them wrong sides together and it's going to seem really counterintuitive, but I need to fold them that way to sew them. And then I'll sew down this seam. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance because I've got quite small squares. I've got six inch. If you have a, a larger square then you may feel that a larger seam allowance is better. Maybe say three quarters of an inch if you're doing up to a ten inch square. So I am going to go and sew my first row and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like. So my first row up at the top here is sewn. If I pull it over our seam allowances are up on the top. That's what it looks like from the front and on the back it's plain, no seam allowances or edges and just the, uh, the crosses showing in the fabric. So that's my first row. I'm now going to go on and complete exactly the same for my next row and the next row and then we'll see how it comes out. So my rows are all now sewn together so everything there is organised and in a big pile for me. So it's now time to sew our rows into blocks. Um, I've got two rows just here and remember we need to sew them wrong sides together. So this is going to be the back, this is the, the plain part with just the crosses on. This will be the part with our ruffly raggedy goodness and therefore I've put them wrong sides together and pinned here. When it comes to sewing over the seam allowances, I'm going to open up the seam allowances as I sew across and I'll do that front and back and uh, carry on. So I'll start with two, then I'll add another and another and another until the whole thing is sewn together. So all of my rows are now sewn together um, and I ended up with quite a big quilt in the end um, and we're almost finished, finished with the sewing at least. But one thing that we need to do, we're going to have this ragging through all of the seams but we're also going to want to do it on these edges too. So if we've used a half inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew a seam just, um, just through the one layer, half an inch from the edge all the way around and as I do it of course I'll open up the seam allowances and sew flat over the seam allowances and also half an inch around the entire perimeter of the quilt. Well that was a marathon of sewing, it's now three days later, not that I've been sewing solidly for three days, but what I really liked about this project is that I could just do a few squares or a row at a time and then put it down and go off and do something else. So while I was waiting in the morning for my husband to be free in the bathroom, I could run a couple of squares through. And before you know it, it was all done. And I've really now got a quilt that's actually bigger than I expected because it was so much fun. I just kept adding more and more. So now everything is sewn together. You've got the, the front with all the seam allowances and the back, which is plain like this with the, uh, with the crosses on. And so now it's time to get to snipping. So I've got my little snips here. You can use just regular scissors too, but these have got a spring. So these are nice to use. And I've just made a quick start. So I've done a couple of rows just here. And obviously you have to make sure you're not gonna snip through your stitching, but it looks nice and easy. And uh, so I think this is job in front of the TV. I'm gonna sit down in front of a good film, uh, one that I know well, and just snip away. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like before it goes in the wash. So after an evening sat in front of the TV, at last all my snipping is done. It wasn't difficult, um, but it was time consuming and I'm completely covered in fluff and so is my sofa. I also managed to uh, get a big blister on my knuckle there from all that snipping. So um, if you are thinking, you know, you haven't started yet, go for um, a smaller quilt or larger squares, certainly don't go for anything smaller than the six inches. You'll end up sewing and cutting and it will be an absolute marathon. So all of my snipping is now done and it's ready to go in the wash. I'm gonna put this in at least once, probably twice, and see how it, co how it comes out. I'm gonna throw it in my washer, um, not use any fabric softener, 
because I've, I've heard that that, um, that can interfere with the process. So I'm just going to put it in with the, the usual detergent. I'm going to add in a couple of towels because I think those will help with the agitation process. And it's also really quite heavy. I've made it quite big. So by adding in a couple of towels, I'm hoping that's going to balance out my drum and I'm not going to have any problems when it comes to spin. Okay, so I'll do that now and I'll show you how it turns out. So now, here is my snuggly wuggly, super comfortable, super fluffy and nice and soft rag quilt. And I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, I put it through the wash twice in the end and I'm glad I put it through with a couple of towels because it does fray and obviously give off all the bits of fluff and things. But the good thing is that all the bits of fluff stuck to the towels rather than to the washer. So I was able to just take it out, dry it, give them a shake and everything is now hunky-dory. So I'm going to post some lovely pictures if I can stop stroking it for long enough to hold the camera. So it's been one of my favourite projects so far. It was actually quite a lot of work in the end, but I think it's really been worth it. And I can see this is something that um, we're going to try and use as much as possible. But I don't imagine that we'll be able to get Oliver off of it. He'll probably be on here most of the rest of his life. I know if I was a cat, I would be too. So thank you very much for watching and uh, following along as I've made my first ever very lovely, very snuggly wuggly rag quilt. And I hope to see you over it so, so easy again soon. And we'll work on some more fun projects together. Thanks for watching.